Hello everybody. In this topic, we'll learn about active filter. So basically, this is all the subtopic that we'll learn in this. Uh, first, we will learn about the uh, frequency responses of active filter. Okay. And then we look into the analysis and design of first order filter and followed by the second order filter. Uh, later, we'll look into the higher order filter. And the last two topic will be a band pass filter followed by a band stop filter. Okay, hopefully at the end of this topic, the student should be able to distinguish between different types of active filter. We have uh, four types, which is the low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass and band stop filter. So you have to distinguish between those uh, be, uh, in terms of the frequency responses and of course the order of the filter. And then uh, the student should be able to derive the transfer function of any given active filter involving of op -M. Uh We we'll look into detail uh, what is transfer function and then you have to know how to design an active filter and solve any uh, related question uh, involving active filter. So basically, there is four uh, topic learning outcome. So what is a filter? So for a filter, we'll have an input signal followed by an output signal. So fi a filter is just an electronic circuit whereby, for example, the input is a signal which so many noise in it. We filter it and we have a very clean noise at the output so meaning that a filter is just a circuit that filter out the unwanted signal okay so uh, a filter is used to pass a certain signal with the frequency that we want okay and uh, because the unwanted signal is usually a frequency coming from noise okay so that that's why we eliminate those noise or we say that we filter it out. Okay. And a filter can be used in a, for example, in a block of high pitch. Okay. Because if you want to broadcast something, usually a high pitch is not, uh, is the unwanted signal. So we remove that. Okay. Or sometimes we remove a certain frequency. Uh, because that frequency will blur certain images. Okay, so we do this by using a low pass filter. And at a low frequency, uh, we use a filter to sharpen and enhance edges of a picture. Okay, and the last example in bio for biomedical application, we filter out um, the signal between uh, a mother and fetus because sometimes when the doctor hear the heartbeat it can hear both and how to differentiate between those we will we will use a filter so basically we can classify the filter uh, in terms of analog filter or digital filter you will learn about the digital digital filter in digital signal processing class so we'll concentrate concentrate on the analog filter so we classify the filter in terms of the frequency band and the element type in the in terms of element type we have a passive or an active filter so in this uh, course we'll learn more on the active filter in terms of frequency band we learn about the low pass filter a high pass filter band pass filter band reject and there is another one which is all pass filter so, uh, what is a passive and active filter? Passive is just a circuit that contains resistor, inductor or capacitor. So, all are passive elements. So, this is an example of a passive circuit. Okay. And for active filter, it consists of active element along with the RLS, RLC. So, this is an active filter. In this uh, circuit, we have an op -M but it could be also a transistor okay 
So basically, the difference between active and passive filter is, uh, in terms of gain, the passive filter, the highest gain is 1. So it is called low safe filter. But for active filter, it provides amplification. So you can have a certain gain, but you need an external sources, meaning that you need a power supply for your circuit. In terms of cost, uh, passive filter is more expensive because we use inductor, but for active filter, it is very cheap. Uh, usually, inductor is not used in the active filter. In terms of complexity, the passive filter has a simple topology, but for the active filter, the topology is quite complex. Uh, so, this is an advantage for passive filter, but in the flexibility, Passive filter, you cannot isolate one stages to another, so it is very difficult for you to design uh, a higher order filter for passive filter. But for active filter, you can isolate each stages easily. Okay, so it is easier for you to design an active filter. In terms of practicality, passive filter is very difficult to implement at a very low frequencies okay but uh, for the active filter it works well at any frequency okay and in terms of frequency selectivity this is advantages for passive filter because when it use inductor you can tune it to um, you can tune the cutoff frequency easily but uh, for active filter you have a very limited quality factor okay so this is the uh, difference between active filter and passive filter so active filter uh, will be the main topic for this uh, courses okay so we look into the circuit that consists of op m that can attenuate certain frequency and amplify uh, those that you want okay and it is easier to design and you have to rem remember there is some terminology in filter design that you need to know first is signal to noise ratio because uh, the coming in signal to the input of the filter you have a noise so you want to reject that how good is your filter we we'll look into the signal to noise ratio okay and then we we'll look into the bandwidth of the filter so bandwidth is the range of frequency from low cutoff to the high cutoff frequency. Okay, this is the gain greater than 0 0.707 of the maximum gain. Maximum or we call it the mid gain. Okay, and then we look into cutoff frequency which is the end of the passband. So we have two cutoff frequency, the low cutoff frequency and high cutoff frequency. So this is for band pass filter but for low cutoff uh, sorry for the low fil uh, low pass filter we, you will have a high cutoff frequency and for the high pass filter you will have a low cutoff frequency okay so it is uh, uh, called it is called the pass band and stop band so it distinguish between those two uh, frequencies okay you have fl and fh and sometimes it is called the breakpoint of a filter okay the gain over here is a minus 3 db from the top okay this is linear but later we we'll look into the difference between these two is minus 3 db because it associate with the half power point so this is a low pass filter uh, frequency uh, responses so you have uh, at low frequency then the cutoff you have a gain but for high pass filter it is the opposite it only uh, amplify the frequency after the cutoff frequency before that you'll you get nothing okay and then for band pass filter it passes only the signal between the low cutoff and high cutoff. This is the center frequency. So this is the one that we want. Okay. But opposite to the band pass filter, we have a band reject. We call it band pass. It will reject the frequency between 
the low frequency and the high frequency. So if you look uh, for those four types of filter, okay, uh, the frequency response is called the brick response. Okay, immediately after the uh, pass band, you come to the stop band. So over here, it is a straight uh, differentiation between the uh, stop band and pass band. Those are the ideal filter, okay? Meaning that you have a gain at the pass band right after the cut off frequency at the stop band, you have a zero gain. But that is for the ideal. But basically, we won't have that straight between the pass and stop band. You have another band which is called the transition band. So from the pass band to the stop band, this is example for a low pass filter. You have a slope. Or we call it a roll off. Okay. How close this uh, slope with respect to the ideal frequency response depends on the order of the filter. We look into the higher order filter later. And sometimes at the pass band you have a ripple. And also at the stop band you still have a ripple. This is a, another type of a uh, Amplifier, if you design using a certain uh, characteristic, okay. So, this is the transition band, okay. So, if you look for the four types of uh, filter just now, uh, you will have this, okay. The frequency response, okay, for the low pass, high pass, band pass. Uh, for the band pass, you'll have either a wide band or a narrow band. Okay, you can have either one. And this is for the band reject. So, meaning that all these have a slope. So, this is example of a filter application. Uh, for example, this is a, a stereo system whereby you will have a tweeter, which is a, a high frequency. So you filter out using a high pass filter and you have a subwoofer over here. So meaning that the output over here is at a very low frequency. So you need to use a low pass filter and in the mid range it is a band pass filter. So basically a stereo system is just a filter circuit that filtering different frequency at the high, middle and low frequency. Okay. So, this is the frequency response for high uh, band pass filter and this is a low pass filter. Okay. And equalizer is actually a filter. So, if you move uh, this button over here. Okay. So, usually you'll see like this. So, meaning that you are hearing the sound at a certain frequency so you change the value usually you change the value of capacitor or might be also the value of your resistor in the circuit so equalizer is just a filter okay so you adjusting those frequency and you will hear a certain um, voice or sound at a certain frequency okay so usually it is used in the broadcast and recording studio. Uh, so this is example. Uh, Sometimes if you hear a sound coming uh, from the speaker, from the right speaker and to the left speaker. So over here, you see this is just a low pass filter. This is a band pass filter, second order. This is also a second order. Followed by, you have learned in chapter 1, summing amplifier. Uh, and this is the inverting amplifier. So it will uh, differentiate between to the left and to the right amplifier. I mean speaker. Okay. So that's it about the introduction of the filter. So after this, we learn about the frequency response of a filter. Thank you.